<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. Super excited to be having another member of the Say It Out Loud group program here with me today, Marguerite. Before I go ahead and have her introduce herself, just wanted to let you know, um, yeah, I've been running a series this past month uh, highlighting each of my group members um, on the podcast because we are starting the next round of the Say It Out Loud Say It Out Loud group program August 5th. And so if you've been listening to these episodes and you're like, man, I really got to get my butt in there, get your butt in there. So the link is in the show notes, or you can go to vasavikumar.com forward slash say it out loud. We have early bird pricing right now. So it is $500 one-time payment, or you can have, you can do a payment plan, three payments of 200. Um, And after early bird pricing, it will go up to 750. And there's a three-part payment plan instead um, as well. So I'm super excited to have Marguerite on the show uh, today because I really relate to a lot of Marguerite and why she even joined the program in the first place, which we will get into um, why she joined in the first place. But first, I want to introduce you uh, to Marguerite and say welcome, Marguerite. Thank you for coming on the Say It Out Loud podcast. How are you? Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Can't complain. Can you share with our audience who you are, what you do, where you live, who you be? Okay, so... My name is Marguerite. (laughs) Um, I'm the owner of Marguerite Catherine Coaching. So I do holistic academic coaching and I'm an education consultant as well. Mm -hmm. Holistic academic coaching is, you know, I have a long elevator pitch for it, which is Mm -hmm. I do academic tutoring and it's infused with emotion coaching and executive function coaching, which is what makes it holistic. And I also coach those things as a separate service. I have a feeling that learning from you would be so fun for kids. Like they probably love, if, if a child ever hated learning and then when they come to you, I feel like their whole life would change. I don't want to brag, but yes. I them. want you actually, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 I want you to brag. Please go ahead and brag. I know a lot of my students said they were going to miss me over the summer and they're going to ask their parents if they can continue to see me. You know, our sessions often go on longer. A lot of my students will ask me to hang out after our session. They'll want to have tea with me over Zoom. Um, They just ask me whatever's on their mind because they know that they're going to get a straightforward, honest answer from me. And it gives them the chance to say it out loud like we do in your group. That's what I give to my students too. They have this space and they get to be with somebody who's not their parent, who's not their teacher, but who wants to see them succeed personally and academically. You know, I want to be a champion for Mm -hmm. my students. I hope every kid has a champion. Well, we all have, we all know, right? If, if you, you know, this, this, who's your favorite teacher? I know Miss, Miss Flatte, fourth grade, love her. She died uh, a few years ago, actually. And I remember that. And she was the one that made me love going to school. And I hated going to school because it was really hard growing up in an all white town. Like she was the one, she always made me feel like I was so funny and I was so smart. And I really felt like I was worth something because of her. I'm sure you give that to your students. I hope so. I, I relate to that too. I mean, I missed so much school as a kid. I was terrified of school. I hated doing my homework. Um, So as an adult, I was like, something's up here. I don't think it's just me. So I studied education. I kind of studied my own thing, the, you know, alternative education. And um, so now I'm happy to give that to my students and share with them my experience so that they know they're not alone and that they can still be successful, even if they got D's and F's and hated school when they were 10 years old. You know, what a gift, because you know how many people think, oh, I'm stupid. I'm not smart. I'm not good at this. Well, actually, this leads me to my next question then. Uh, So we're going to do a rapid fire round. You ready? Oh, okay. Speaking of, you know, thinking like, oh, you're not good at stuff and whatever. um, What is something that you've never been able to do well? Something I've never able, never been able to do well. Oof. Um my taxes. <laughs> does that count? Of course it does. Yeah. But you're getting support with that, aren't you? Yeah. 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 I'm getting there. Okay. I love that. Uh, what's something, well, I, you know, I'm, I am the daughter of a CPA, so I find that fun. Like, you know, it's like <laughs> I have, my cousin is now my CPA, so he does everything for me because my father doesn't practice anymore. So uh, yes, I'm, you're, you're getting support with your taxes, right? Didn't you share that with us? Like, yeah. 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 It'll happen. It'll happen. Yes. Okay. What's something you think everyone should try at least once? Therapy. 
Oh, say it again. <laughs> For real. I go to therapy. I do have people that disagree. Um, I like my ex. He was like, well, you know, <laughs> he went to therapy and he was like, I got what I needed out of it. I don't think I need to go again. I'm like, uh, really? Like, are you sure about that? Like, he got what he needed. As I, yeah. How's your life? All right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where people yeah. say that, like, oh, I went once. I'm like, okay, great. How did that work? Try going for like, you know, 20 some, 26 years. You know what I mean? Like literally I started at the age of 12 and it's like, you got, I mean, any people who ask me like, well, who do you think should go to therapy? Well, if you had a childhood, go to therapy. <laughs> Anyone who had a childhood should be yeah. in therapy, you know? So great. Love that. Um, if you had to work on only one project for the next year, what would it be? Uh, I do have a, a book in the works, mm -hmm. so that would be nice to just focus on that. Yeah. that I like you said, that would be nice. It would, so you, if you could just focus on your book, that'd be awesome for you. Yeah. Beautiful. You want to share a little bit about what the book's about? It is about my methodology um, and how to be a champion for every kid. So oh! My five principles of what I do, of, you know, what I do in my practice, what I do for kids, how people can do it for the kids in their lives and even for themselves, you know? A lot of things I practice with my students, it's it's really validating, it's really reassuring because I'm reinforcing these things to my inner child as I'm teaching these kids. No, you're not stupid. No, you just don't get it yet. You will, you're gonna be a successful mm -hmm. adult. You know, I like you for who you are. All of these things are messages I wish I heard as a kid. So to be doing it in my practice is, uh, again, really validating and reinforcing and kind of like rewriting my own childhood. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. And I can say this as someone who's just, you know, submitted her book manuscript for the, uh, for my upcoming book, Say It Out Loud. Every single chapter that I felt stuck was uh, an area where I had to deepen my love for myself. So it was a growing process. People don't get it. That's why writing books is so hard because it's truly a like, inter it's an internal process. You know, I'm writing a chapter on, I was, I was, I remember being stuck on the chapter on expressing your emotions out loud. And I'm like, why is this so hard for me? And I was like, oh, Vasavi, where do you gloss over your emotions? And I like had a moment. I stepped away from that chapter. I cried. I talked about it with a friend. I sh I think I shared it with all of you inside the, the, um, the uh, uh, community chat that we have. And so I love that you have a methodology and I'm already thinking like, man, just that word champion, you know, just championing the, our children, championing their, their inner child, championing their gifts. Like what a gift that you're giving to these kids. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. Also, if you're not on the wait list for my book, uh, head on over to vasavikumar.com forward slash wait list. So you will be the first to know when the book comes out. All right, next question. When you have, Marguerite, when you have 30 minutes of free time, how do you pass the time? I play guitar and sing my favorite songs. Wait, I didn't know that you played, like, are you, like, do you like, are you good at playing guitar? I can just play chords, but I've been a musician practically my whole life, always playing different instruments, trying different things out. So I'm on guitar now, on and off with different teachers, um, but I do it for fun. I've got my chords. I find songs that I want to sing that are on my mind. And if I have 30 minutes, I will just sit there and sing my songs. Okay. So, okay. So this Friday, we're recording this on a Tuesday, this Friday, when we have our next group, you're going to play for us. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Pick a song. Okay. I personally love the song Creep. Oh, <laughs> That's um, a good one. I'll see if I can play it. I like uh, Self Esteem by Incubus. I don't know that one. I, oh. probably, have, I probably do know it, but I... I'm very much an alternative rock person. You'd be surprised. While I, yes, it so gets me in my feelings. Uh, so you, okay, so get a song ready. You're going to play for us on Friday. Okay, I'll start practicing as soon as we get off this podcast. You know, this is really the beauty of our group is that like, I want everyone to just like not be so scared. It's like, okay, you're playing for us in four days. Just do it. Just, you can do it. And it doesn't need to be perfect. We're not looking to give you a fucking Grammy. You know what I mean? Like we just, I want you to just practice your, your guitar. That's beautiful. And, and sing and perform for us. I trust y'all. I can't wait to hear what you're going to do. It's going to be great. Um, okay. And oh, so, you, oh, so we did a rapid fire when you have 30 minutes of free time. Okay. You play guitar and you're going to sing for us and you're going to play for us on Friday. All right. We're going to segue into this next section where it's really about our relationship to saying it out loud. Okay. So uh, Marguerite, when did you learn that it was safer to lie than it was to say things out loud? 
I can't remember a time where I knew otherwise. Hmm. Wow. So since consciousness, did I learn that it was safer to lie? And what do you, what was it that you, that was unsafe in telling the truth? Why was it unsafe to tell the truth? Um, threats of being unloved. You know, I grew up in a household with an alcoholic mother and those households are always shrouded in mystery in lies in hiding what's going on at your house, not telling people what's going on, your parents outright lying to you about what's going on. And, and you pick it up, you know, you're not dumb as a kid. You, you know, there's something up. You don't have the words for it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but saying that you don't like that, um, saying that you don't feel safe in your own home and that being met with like, well, yes, you do. This is your house, you live here. Like, of course we love you. Things like that. Um, I think it, it didn't really seem like there was another option other than to lie to myself and lie to the, the people who cared about me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so since the program, do you find yourself, uh, and I, I, I did ask this on, you know, with Megan as well on last week's podcast, do you find yourself lying less? And there's no shame in this question, everyone. Like I know we've been shamed because we've maybe lied, but understanding why you've lied will have more, you'll have more compassion for yourself. Even those little white lies, you know, when we, so do you, do you find that you maybe you know, telling the truth more and being more honest with yourself and others? Absolutely. I think, I mean, I'm, for a long time, I've been on this journey, truthfulness and being honest with myself and being honest with others. Um, <clears throat> but because the alcoholic in my family was my mother and she's the one who I felt the least safe with being in the say that loud program with a bunch of women, um, has really done something for me, you know, just cause I can be honest, but to be honest and then have that met with as much compassion, um, and relatability, I suppose that this group gives. Um, that's new for me. And I think that's really powerful too. It's so beautiful. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's like, when we are honest, the, we don't even need anything. We just need to be able to say it without being judged, without being met exactly. with disapproval, without needing to fix it, without pity. I don't need anyone's pity. I really, it's, it's, it's honestly disrespectful when I get, if someone ever pity, I'm like, don't, please don't feel bad for me. I'm like the strongest bitch you'll ever meet. Please don't pity <laughs> me. I love that you said that because it's so true that, you know, just being surrounded by other women, other human beings who are committed to telling the truth makes it safer for you to tell your truth. Cause that's the expectation. The expectation in the, tr in the group is saying it out loud is being honest. And you do that so well. You're so, you're so vocal in the group. And I, one of the things um, that, that I remember you saying when you first joined the group was that you were always called Miss Little Chatterbox. And um, that really affected you because you silenced yourself. But, you know, inside you had this chatterbox that wanted to come out. Do you find yourself being less judgy about you being a chatterbox? I do. I absolutely do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I say and now I go a little bit quiet. No, I do feel like I'm a chatterbox again and that what I have to say matters and mm -hmm. I have all this knowledge inside of me and I've been through so much in my life that I would love to share with others and it really comes from just valuing that aspect of myself and yeah not silencing myself or not trying to be like that girl you know like we talked about <laughs> not trying to be that girl who's just like shy little girl no I have I have a lot to say and yeah you do <laughs> and, and you and, and that's the thing I will say this, it's that um, I actually noticed, because I relate to you a lot with the chatterbox, I um, I used to think I talked a lot. And what I realized is because I had never truly been deeply listened to, I did talk yeah. a lot. Because when I did get someone's attention, it was like, oh my God, I need to suck this up. I don't know. I actually talk less yeah. now. So when I do talk, it's like, because I now have the, because I now listen to myself and I have people in my life who deeply listen, I actually do not feel the need to talk so much. Do you, do you feel that way? I totally relate. Yeah. There's no more, there's a point where you're balancing it out. You know, like there's that pendulum swinging where you go from super quiet to then like, oh my gosh, somebody's listening to me. Let me overshare my whole life and get validation for it all. 
And then eventually it goes back into the middle where you're like, oh no, I, I'm good with myself. I know my story. I know what other people might think, or, you know, I have a strong enough intuition to be like, do I really want to share my stuff with this particular person? Like Brene Brown says, not everybody deserves to hear your story. Mm -hmm. You know, that I, I'm back into the middle of being like, I don't need to overshare. Mm -hmm. I know what it is and I don't need to be silent either if I've got something on my mind. What's something that you've been wanting to say out loud, but haven't? Something I've been wanting to say out loud, but haven't. Oof. I say a lot of stuff out loud. I don't even know what I'm not saying out loud. Um, hmm. Let me... Is it, is it something that I should think about or not really? Maybe there's yeah, nothing. So, so it's so funny. Every time I ask this question, it is, uh, I get different responses. So let, let me shape it in a different way. What is something that you maybe haven't acknowledged or celebrated about yourself out loud? Oh, I'm going to change that question from here on out. This is what the question is. <laughs> something I have not celebrated about myself. So, um, yeah. So let me ask this differently. What's, what is something that you, um, yeah, what is something that you haven't celebrated or acknowledged about yourself out loud, but you're going to right now? So once in a while, it does hit me that all my life, like I've just wanted a home. I've wanted a stable home where we weren't moving all the time, where I got to be with my family, where I didn't feel like I was going to have to leave any second. Um, and... I moved into this place not that long ago. And sometimes it hits me that like, you know, I look around and all of this stuff is mine and it reminds me of me. And I have memories attached to all of these things in here and I feel comfortable, I feel safe. Um, I know a lot of people like to travel and get up and go and I do too, but I also really just love the fact that I have a home and that I made this and I made it from myself and for myself. Um, I'm going to get choked up talking about it because it really is so meaningful to me that I did this. Um, because knowing my background, not everybody could have done or come out of what I came out of in, in this way. And I'm, if I saw one of my students doing what I've done, I would be immensely proud of them. I really felt that. I felt that, you know, that you, you have a sense of pride in the fact that you created safety for yourself. You have given yourself the safety that maybe you did not experience as a child. Um, and you have that in the form of a home. I, I really, I get that when you're like, you know, a lot of people like to travel, but you're just like, you're, you just want to be at home. It feels safe for you to be at home and you've created that safe space for yourself, which is why I think you're so good at creating safe spaces for other people as well, right? It's something that you needed as a child that you maybe didn't get as a child, that you didn't get as a child. And now, which is why you're so good at what you do with other people. You provide them with what you didn't get. But what I love is that you've also given that to yourself. Yeah, yeah, I definitely believe that I have to, I have to experience it first. I have to Mm -hmm. do that stuff for myself first before I can do it for anybody else because I know what it feels like and I know how to get there and yeah I, I do pride myself in that ability to do that for my students and for other people because that's what people tell me a lot of the time you know I don't know just like you I don't know why I feel like I can just open up to you I feel so comfortable talking to you you know I, I don't know what it is because you're not judging them and people yeah and I'm like I do you're being judged <laughs> You're yeah. not judging. Like you don't have judgy energy, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. I love that. I didn't expect that. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't have any expectation of what you were going to say. Um, but I, I love that. I love that. I feel the same way about the home that I live in. It's I, I walk in and I'm always like, God, there are like little things around the house now that I'm start. I just, I just put a plant in the foyer. I'm like, Oh, I love this plant here. You know, so it's like, it's all mine. It may not make sense to anyone, but it makes sense to me. My plant. Yeah. I, it's my plant. Yes. I love that. Okay. Uh, what is a catchphrase that you've been saying out loud lately? I can do hard things. Oh, I love that. Glennon yeah. Doyle. Yeah. Yeah. And I teach it to my students too. You know, all of us say, oh, this is too hard. This is hard. I'm not going to do it because it's hard. Um, and then it's like, yeah, okay, it's hard. Let's accept that. 
And let's also accept that we can do hard things. Mm. I love that. Yeah. And, and, you know, catchphrases change as seasons change. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it might be, I can do hard things. Next season, it might be, you know, Megan was sharing this. Money comes easily to me, right? Really like different season, different different catchphrase, right? So I love that for you in this season. Um, what is something that you want to encourage my audience to say more of out loud? Oof. What's something I want to encourage the audience to say more of out loud? Um, I... I'll tell them what I tell my students, which is the power of yet growth mindset Mm -hmm. to to take those little steps towards the possibility of doing something. So that's what the power of yet is. For example, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. We can't change our entire thoughts in a minute, but we can add on a word to them. We can add on the word yet. So I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this yet. If we can just add on that little word, I feel like that really changes things. And it gives us the possibility. And with that possibility comes the patience too, to know that you'll see it through, that you will have those skills. You will be able to do it at some point, maybe not now. That's okay to accept. We can't, we don't have the skills to know how to do everything and anything, but you will. And you absolutely will if you give yourself the permission to be patient with yourself and give yourself the possibility. It's, it's not cra- isn't that fascinating that one word can change everything. It's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't know how to do that. Da, 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 yet. And that immediately just kind of enlivens you a little bit. You know, one of the, yeah. one of the things that I have to constantly remind myself is, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this. And when oh, yeah. I, I, when I say that, I don't mean it in like, a, oh, I have to do it. It's just the way I speak. It's like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. Like I'm checking it off in my head and it, I love it. It does give me a sense of adrenaline, but I also get slightly stressed, right? So I, I have to consciously say to myself, no, I get to do that. I get to write all these emails. I get to schedule my emails. I get to create my content. I get to do this. And I'm like, I have a girlfriend, Amber, who, who always does that. She always does. I get to like, it's like stressful shit that would normally feel stressful. And she's like, nope, I get to do it. I I learned that from her and a few other people. So even I that, that I love that I get to do this. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh my gosh, I have my own business. I get to respond to these emails. I get yeah. to call this person up and like schedule these things. This is something I would have only dreamed about 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, I get to do these things. It's crazy how one little one simple word. So everyone listening right now, just whatever you're telling yourself, you know, um, add the word yet to it. You know, if you're telling yourself that you can't do something, first of all, do not even say I can't. My voiceover teacher gets so she's 66. I love her. And when I told her I can't, I, I was, you know, we were in the recording studio last this past weekend. And I go, her name is Lainey, which is the same name as my dog. It's probably why I love her so much. I was like, Lainey, I can't do that. And she was like, no, she like yelled at me. And she's like, you can't say that. You can't say can't. And I was like, all right, fine. But like, even I need a reminder, right? We all need that reminder. And I love that you, that's why I think you're so good at what you do with your students is because you're constant you're working on it with yourself so you're embodied right it's not like you're just teaching it from theory you're you're you actually are living it which makes you so much more powerful and potent in your delivery of work um what is something or no sorry what is the most badass thing that you're proud of that you know that you've said out loud recently the thing i'm proudest of saying out loud recently um Honestly, I brought my brother on to my business Mm -hmm. recently and I had to set expectations with him. I had to be like, hey, you don't know me in my business capacity. You know me in sister capacity. Mm. So I had to lay it out and I had to say it out loud, all the things I was feeling and all the things I was thinking and had to get done. Um, And I didn't expect it to be so... uh, challenging but it was and i was definitely proud of myself to be like wow okay i just i i had to leave my little sister role behind for a minute and be the boss that i am in my business and tell my brother what i expect in my business because of how much it means to me so that was definitely a badass moment for me i'm very proud of you for doing that is this your older brother yeah Oh wow! Like yeah, that's great. Older brothers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. You're you're the youngest of how many 
You have three brothers or two? I have three older brothers. So I'm the youngest of four. Wow. Yeah. Like that's, that's a boss move right there. You know, it's like you're putting aside, you know, just putting aside that emotion. Not that, you know, not that we don't want to lead with emotion, but it's like our emotions can get in the way of us doing sometimes what is best for us and what is necessary in that moment. So I love that you did that. Laid down the law. Yeah, definitely. Um, and what do you say out loud to yourself when you look in the mirror? <laughs> the cheesy girly things that we all do. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Wow, look at you. Look at you go, is that you? That is me. <laughs> I love that. We need more of that. Like you got to be able to say that to yourself. And even if you don't believe it at first, start to say it. And then you'll feel like, yes, like this is, this is, you know, I was asking Megan, one of our, you know, one of the other members in the group and she goes, I just say I'm hot. I'm like, yes, please. Because we, we live in a society where we are taught to hate ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're not good enough. We're not this. I love that you, you are so proud of who you are when you look in the mirror. It took time. Yeah. That's something that I I know that you've worked on within the group is like, um, and, and what I want to say this to everyone listening, who's thinking about joining, I think, I think Marguerite, I I would love to like bring you have, you know, talk about this with you. You know, a lot of times it can be very, very scary for women to join a group full of other women, especially if you haven't had good relationships with friends, if you've had friends betray you, if you just really just never had a, you know, you, you just can't, or you, you know, you, you didn't really feel supported by your own mother growing up or whatever. Um, did you feel any of that when you joined the group? Were you worried about that at all? Um, I think it was a little bit buried. I don't think it was top of mind that, oh my gosh, I'm going to join all these women. What are they going to think of me? But I think it was definitely in there or, you know, like assessing my surroundings, assessing the group and being like, okay, a little bit of who do I need to be to Mm. be in this group at the beginning? Obviously we've learned a lot of skills since then, but, um, there was definitely a little bit of that, a little bit of intimidation on my part. Do you feel like you are you are yourself inside of this group? Yes. Yeah. That's so beautiful because I was just saying this to everyone in the community chat, I think it was yesterday or this weekend. I was like, listen, how you be in this group is how I want you to be in the rest, every other area of your life. If you need one place where you can be fully yourself, if you don't have practice being fully yourself, sharing your stuff, owning, you know, you know, saying your flaws out loud, um, sharing your desires. If you don't have a place, you like, it's going to be hard for you to do that in other areas of your life. So this is like your training ground. You practice being yourself here. And then you take that, you, you're going to get so used to like, oh, this is me. This is really me. Then you take that and you incorporate that into every other area of your life. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, oh my gosh, I have, like, I know I'm okay. I've got at least 10 other women supporting me right now. I've got 10 other women who believe in me and believe in my mission. And that's more than enough. And all these women are women that I aspire to be like. And so (laughs) it's, it's really powerful. It's, it really is something I think about and have um, leaned on in my mind and my life that, Mm -hmm. okay, I don't, I don't have to worry as much as I do. I don't, need to feel lonely. And if I do, I can even just express it somewhere. Um, or if I'm nervous about a decision or just not feeling like myself, we've only known each other for a couple, a month, month and a half, but it feels like a really nice sort of unconditional support. Um, just in like that kind of love for humanity way that all of us just love each other unconditionally because that's who we are as people and so it's really nice to just go back to the cohort and Uh (laughs) express myself hashtag say it out loud sisters who i who who came up with that you came up with the cohort no no courtney came up with courtney Courtney came up with say it out loud sisters And I just want everyone hearing this. Um, if you are in the program and then you decide that you want to continue on because you love the group, I do offer alumni pricing. So anyone who's in the current Say It Out Loud group, they know, you know, they paid a certain amount to be in the first round. But if you want to just keep showing up, because like, listen, this is, it's a support group. If you think about it, we all need a support group in a way and just have a place that you can keep going to and you can, you know, leave when you want to leave. There's no like, you have to stay for this long. So, you know, there is alumni pricing um, for my current members. They can just pay money month to month 
you know, if that's what they want or if they want to pay for another 12 weeks. And like, wow, at that point, you would have been practicing saying it out loud for six months. That's a lot. That's a lot. Considering if you spent pretty much your whole life being inauthentic with yourself and others, but now you're like six months straight, you've been practicing saying it out loud. Like, can you imagine what you'll be like in a year? You know what I mean? Like that, that's it's just very powerful because you're in the practice and habit of saying it out loud. It is just a muscle that you are building. So that's a perk uh, when you join the program that you don't have to go anywhere. You can stay in the group and there is an alumni pricing, which is, um, which will, which will be easy to continue staying in the group, you know, if you want to. So um, Marguerite, is there anything left unsaid? Is there anything that you want to say that you haven't said out loud? Hmm. I think what's been on my mind lately is just patience. Mm -hmm. the practice of patience with ourselves and with others with our relationships we enter into like scarcity thinking without even realizing and we live in an age of instant gratification that we get anxious and we get scared when things don't happen according to our timeline right now I feel like I'm in a little bit of a valley between peaks Mm. And so patience has been on my mind, patience and, and trusting myself. So I just want to share that just to remind people of patience. And, and what's beautiful is that you're in it right now. You're really in it and you're doing this work of, of trusting and being patient with yourself. And I think that's a beautiful place to be and speak from, right? Because it's so easy to look at someone and be like, oh, they're already there. Oh, it's going to be take so long for me to be there. But it's like, no, I love bringing my members on the podcast because it's like, no, these are women that are doing the work and they are expanding every single day, new level, new devil. And it's like, you know, this internal work of, you know, peeling back these layers and the masks that we have worn throughout our lives it's a day-by-day process so just thank you for sharing that because you're 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 sharing your stuff in real time and that's very important for people to see you know you can be powerful and vulnerable and they both can co-coexist you're not any less powerful because you're being vulnerable or sharing your process out loud you know so thank you for uh having the courage to do that today thank you um, where can people learn more about you? Where can they, if, if, if we have a mom or a dad or a, or a caregiver listening and they want their kids to work with you or they want to get the conversation started, um, I don't, uh, you don't work with adults, do you? I do. I do work with adults. I do coach uh, adults with ADHD. Oh, my God. Environmental optimization. Oh my God. Okay. Amazing. So you just heard that, uh, from Marguerite's mouth. So if you have a kid who you would love to learn more about, um, the way Marguerite, offers holistic services. Um, or if you're an adult with ADHD and you want to learn how to optimize your environment and learn how to find what ways work best for you, where can people find you, Marguerite? I do have my website, marguerite.catherine.com. Mm-hmm. I am on Instagram at marguerite.catherine. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on Facebook too, but I'm not on there too much. Okay. So nobody so likes probably, Facebook. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> probably Instagram and my website are the best ways. Okay, beautiful. I will put those in the show notes. And for everyone listening, if you've listened all the way up until the end, thank you so much. I hope you got something out of this interview. I know you did. If you've been thinking about joining the Say It Out Loud program, this would be the best time for you to join because we are in early bird pricing, $500 for the 12 weeks um, or three payments of 200. So I'll put the link for that in the show notes. I want to say thank you again for always tuning in. to the podcast. I always just want to bring on people who you can see and and, um, be inspired by and know that it is safe to be yourself and to say it out loud. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast.